Okay, welcome everybody to the Jones Library Buildings and Facilities meeting for, I don't even know what today is, Tuesday, March 21st, uh, starting at 9 a.m. Um, uh, I want to double check, make sure the uh, meeting is being recorded. Um, uh, we have a quorum, so I'm going to make sure everybody can hear and be heard. So, uh, Farah? Here. George? Here. And Alex, I'm here. And joining us also is Sharon. Uh, let's see, have a quorum, meeting come to order at nine. Sorry, I'm running through my little list. Um, so let's see, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, uh, which I think have just recently been further amended, uh, we're conducting the meeting via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meetings calendar on the Town of Amherst website, but also on the library website. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the post agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the library website. So with that out of the way, uh, first thing I have on the agenda is uh, the meeting minutes of January 17th, if someone would make a motion to approve those minutes. Uh, motion to approve. I second it. Any comments, questions? changes to the minutes mm -hmm. okay so uh this would be a uh vote to approve the meeting minutes of january 17th 2023 farah yes george yes and alex is a yes as well so it looks like we have three people in the audience today um this is a portion of public comment if anyone would like to make a public comment Please raise your virtual hand and we can bring you into the room and would love to hear and appreciate your comment. Give people a minute to find their button in case <laughs> they don't know where it is. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised. So with that, we will go on to item number two, which is the delivery van update, which I assume it's the same as it's always been, which is it's still being built, or is there something new and exciting? There's nothing new and exciting, and I, I actually just uh, had correspondence with the dealership yesterday, and they just have nothing new to report. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item on our agenda is the North Amherst Library, um, and where we are on that. I don't have much to say. I don't know if George does. The only thing that I have is uh, Guilford recently asked me about uh, circulation desk models. So that's exciting. Uh, but that's all I got. Yeah, and I'm supposed to meet with IT and uh, the branch head at some point. Uh, it was supposed to be today, but I haven't heard anything. Uh, just to discuss um, PowerPoints and technology and stuff like that. So it sounds like they're definitely moving on schedule. Okay. And remind me again, when is that scheduled to reopen or for us to put our services back in? Uh, so the last, the last I heard was August, but I don't know if that means that's when construction ends or if that's when they're planning on opening. So, uh, so I'm not sure. August-ish. Okay. okay, great. Um, okay, uh, Farah, did you have any questions or? Okay. Um, I was just so, saying that's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so monthly building and grounds report. George, what's the latest? What's going on? Um, actually, a lot of stuff has been going on. The uh, They came and dug some test pits uh, to check the groundwater levels uh, as part of the renovation and expansion project. Um, and they filled all of the holes that they dug. They were much larger than I was expecting. Uh, but they did a great job and they didn't seem to disturb anything, which was wonderful. Um, and they did it all between all the snowstorms that decided to just, it finally decided to be winter, like right when all that was happening, but they, they did a great job and didn't disturb a lot. Um, we've had a couple of HVAC issues, one of which was a two inch water pipe that had developed a leak. So we did an emergency repair on that. That was in one of the equipment rooms on the ground floor. Uh, so we opted to replace that pipe as if a two inch water pipe had burst, it would have flooded the basement for sure. So we took care of that. 
Uh, but there's two rubber expansion joints in the boiler room, uh, which are part of the water circulation system that runs both in the winter and in the summer that the rubber expansion joints, I think I've held one up at a prior meeting, but they're about this big around. They're made out of vulcanized rubber and they, they, they wear out over time. They get dry and they start showing cracks. And we have a couple that are showing cracks. So we will be getting those replaced. And I just got a quote. It's something like $3,500. Uh, so we'll be taking care of that very shortly. Um, other than that, uh, I just wanted to mention that we've been having, and it's not just us, but it seems that it has been a bit of a marked increase in graffiti uh, in the building and on the grounds and in general around town. Uh, we're reasonably certain it's teens, but uh, we've been just trying to stay on top of it. It's been becoming a pretty regular thing, and I just wanted to make a note of that. And I think that's all I have from my end. Okay. Um, Farah, did you have any questions, comments? Oh, no, just the graffiti. Was it like just usual crap? Or I mean, <laughs> is it art? It, is it? It's fancy? not art. No, it's not art. It's it's mostly just tagging. It's, it's nothing racist or... Uh, um, yeah, it's 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 nothing like that. It's mostly just names and and random designs. It's it's nothing that um I would see as hateful. It's just graffiti. Okay. Thanks. Um so uh just a reminder for folks so the the test pits um that were dug that's for the storm water management system that's to determine what what we need for our the rain garden for a storm water management system yeah okay um and then the there was a question that came up in the um trustee meeting about um the three remaining boilers and if we were to lose one more boiler, um, is that problematic only in the winter when we need that capacity to heat in colder temperatures? Or what, like, I guess the question is, when do we switch over from uh, heat to AC, um, which I know is usually like a good day for you? <laughs> and, and, and no, well, no, 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 well, the switch over is never good, but, and then what are the impacts in the warmer months um, if we're to lose a boiler or have, I guess, a larger issue? Right. The, uh, when we change over to cooling, uh, we typically do it the end of May, first week of June. We really tend to rely on what the weather pattern is like. Uh, when that happens, the boilers actually get shut down and they are they are off for the duration until the fall when we switch back to heating such heating, which is typically end of September, first week of October. So they're shut down. There's no effect or anything throughout the summer for cooling months. Um, I have made inquiries as to what it would cost if we needed to put a temporary heating system in. Uh, some places, this is all they do. They have trailers and with temporary heating system. I have not gotten a response yet. And I know it's partially because uh, our HVAC company is dealing with staffing, trying to figure out who's going to go where. But uh, I'm looking to get an answer on that just to get a very rough idea as to what kind of economic impact that would be. So I'm I'm still working on that. Okay. Thank you for that. That was going to be my next question. So, um, okay. Uh, Far, did you have any? Did that bring up any? No. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, in theory, once we make it to the end of May, potentially, we're good until we get to the fall again. As long as we don't have any air conditioning breakdowns. <laughs> Right. So I guess that's so that's a good question. So what is yeah. the status of our air conditioning systems? Really? I mean, we're in the same situation. Everything is everything is pretty much of the same age. Uh, the only thing I would say is that the main unit that does cool the building is that's the chiller 
Uh, that's the largest piece of equipment. One side of that was rebuilt about five years ago. Uh, so it is still operating in decent shape, but of course it still relies on pumps and fans and all kinds of other things to just spread the cool air throughout the building and the cold water that cools the building. So it's really, you know, everything is, everything else is of the same age and we're, we're on a co constant watch. And of course, once cooling season starts, we, we have to become a lot more mindful of the equipment above Sasha collections because generally we do not have any if there's a breakdown in special collections in the winter time it's not as um catastrophic as in the summertime because in the summertime you deal with condensation and a lot of water so it'll just be come us doing a daily check of that system upstairs and just keeping an eye on everything and make sure that we don't have any leaks or breakdowns do we so i mean i guess i'm i'm the timing on all of this is always really challenging i mean if the project proceeds this all becomes obviously so much simpler <laughs> in in the sense of like we have equipment that's on order and we don't need to worry and i guess um and and you know maybe this is the next the next we're, we're sort of like m moving into the next section i guess at this point about the backup building project planning. So maybe I'll pause my thoughts, questions for any, for you guys to provide an update and then we'll we'll go from there. Unless again, Farah, just anything you're, okay. So so I, I think we're sort of transitioning into the backup building project planning. Um, okay, that'll, that'll, that'll be me. Um, okay. um, so, so there is an internal working group. It's, you know, me and George and Jeremiah, uh, Sean Mangano, um, Rob Mora, uh, and we've met several times over the winter. Um, and so what's been decided is the HVAC system, that is the number one priority that, um, uh, so if, if the building project should fail to move forward, uh, the next day the town would hire an engineer. Um, to develop a solution. Uh, so that would be the most inexpensive path to moving forward. Um, and getting a cost estimate for that, uh, Sean and Jeremiah will do that over the summer. Um, and so when I when I see that, I will uh, share that with, with you all and the trustees. Bye. Sharon, when you um, say they'll the next day they'll hire an engineer, is this someone you have on speed dial? Because it seems like all these things take forever. So is it someone that's already in place? No, they'd have to go out to bid because of how much it'll cost. So, so yeah. Okay. So once we get to next year, then if the project doesn't go through, then there's a whole waiting period so, uh, so I step. so we're still uh, in the middle of this huge mess, pretty a, much a, a, a little bit, but I don't think um, you know all the all the processes, the forms are in place. So that's not, you know, they'll seek bids, they'll collect mm -hmm. the bids, they'll be able to hire somebody pre pretty quickly. So um, I I don't think you know another month or however long it would take. We've waited this long. I, yeah. I, I I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that's a concern you'd have to worry about. Okay. Thank you. So I have a question about what we're even talking about. So when we went to Western Builders, um, when George put together sort of the list of you know minimum things for public safety and being able to stay open, and I think back then HVAC was number four on the list. So there are three things in theory that have higher priority, but for the fact that we don't have a choice anymore on the HVAC. Um, so they had the price that they had given us was for essentially like more like a refurbishment of our system rather than we're like with the renovation expansion, it's a whole new system so that we can, because one of our key issues as I understand it and correct me if I'm wrong, George, is that our duct work runs around the atrium so in addition to having problems with the system itself being um, aged out, the actual way that our ductwork is throughout the building is part of what causes the problems. So even 
refurbishing our systems are problems with the leaking uh, atrium and other problems don't go away, right? We still have, am I understanding that correctly? Correct. They're, they're, they're kind of, they're connected, but they're not connected. So that we've determined through these discussions that we would just focus on the HVAC first. And when the time comes where we tackle the atrium issue, whatever HVAC equipment is affected by redesigning the atrium would just be tackled at that point. You know, they're trying to, and, and and this is just based on tours and, you know, Jeremiah and Rob, they're experts in this. Um, they've been given tours. Uh, they are hoping that just our HVAC system can be taken care of. Um, but certainly, you know, when until they hire an, an engineer to actually get in there and redesign, um, it, 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 Alex, it seems like you're getting to the trickle down effect, which is what we keep talking about. Um, I I don't know if it's going to trigger the atrium, which will eventually trigger electrical, which will eventually trigger, you know, all of ADA. They're going to try and do it as cheaply as possible so that uh, money can go towards, you know, the other projects, you know, be if our project fails, then we will go to the back of the line. And so that's how the town is gonna, is thinking about this. So will we, so is the plan that we'll get a refurbished HVAC? So in, so as you all, I mean, Far and I are JCPC, right? The Joint Capital Planning Committee. And so there has clearly been a trend, like, you know, they've replaced systems at the police department, they're replacing. So as they're, what appears to be doing, so let's pretend we didn't have the project, right? Which is essentially what this would be is us pretending the project doesn't exist, right? So I assume we would be like the other town buildings where they're just gonna replace a chiller or they're just gonna replace. And in those cases, you know, they've been working with Stephanie Ciccarello to try and make them greener. Um, so I guess the question is, are they looking at just, replacing a boiler are we looking at somehow making it like what what i like I, I guess i don't really understand what the town is proposing to do because um, i'm not an HVAC person so i don't know well i don't i don't know if it's like a plug and play or like i don't know enough about how it works i mean i will say this stephanie chicarella has been involved in the conversations since because she was part of the tour so uh she's aware of our situation and i'm sure that she will be involved in the process that goes forward. We're kind of we're kind of going to be at the mercy of the engineer. Uh, you know, should should it go forward this way, where the town hires an engineer, they're going to be able to look at all the systems in better depth, and they will be able to determine exactly what has to be replaced. So we are at a bit of a standstill right now because we really can't see the entire picture until an engineer would come in here and look over everything in detail and come up with a plan moving forward. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So it's from a a lot to, yeah, it's a lot to wrap your head around, but <laughs> um, you know, my, my hopes are that all of the important systems would get replaced with the most uh, cost-effective and efficient systems available to us. Um, but given that the building itself is not being going to be redesigned, if we go forward with the repair option, it will most likely be a replace in kind only with more efficient modern equipment. Okay. Um... And so, so how does this work in terms of, um, so the updated memorandum that I don't have in front of me that we signed said that we're gonna start this process, but the town is really running the process, not us. So am I correct in assuming, I mean, I, I just want, I don't wanna get to a point where it's time for a decision and somebody on town council says, you know, you guys haven't done what you said when so I, I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page that like, you know, there's an internal working group made up of 
people from town, right? The and from the library, and the recommendation of that group, really town, is that we hire an engineer, and that town's the one setting the timeline, not us, right? Yeah, the town, Paul, the town manager is. It, he's deciding everything, you know, with input from his staff, really. Um, I it's town money. I just, I, I just don't want somehow, I mean, I feel like, yeah, I, I have, I have pains around the whole Western builder thing where, you know, we did exactly what we were asked to do. And then there were questions about why we didn't do other things. So I just, I don't want to be in this exact same position of doing exactly what we're asked to do by town and then someone else who's not following all of this says, hey, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? So I, I'm not sure how we get that clarity, but I just don't want to be in that position again. And my other question is the temporary system, I assume we need to price no matter what, because if the timeline that I'm hearing is if we wait until, are we waiting for the vote to go out? When are we getting the bid? It's unclear. Okay, so let's say it's, I don't know, even if it's in six months, right, we go out and we get, you know, we decide that we go out and we hire this engineer. It's my understanding it's a minimum of a year before we'd even see the replacement parts, right? So I don't know what town, yeah, so I mean, I don't, I assume town is up to speed on the fact that like, if we wait six months, we develop a plan. I mean, we can't obviously order anything until we know. (laughs) How, how, right? I mean, it's this whole project is the chicken and the egg, right? Like we can't put on order new equipment and if, if the project doesn't fail, but we know we've got a year gap. So we've got to have a temporary mm. solution, right? Until if the project doesn't move forward, we need to pay for a temporary solution, right? As well as paying for the new solution. If, if the boiler, you know, if the HVAC system breaks down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you two are on buildings and facilities because you'll get, you know, information that, that George and I won't hear and, and vice yeah. versa. And, it, and it's just something to consider if, if it gets to the point where we say, if we go back into heating system, heating season, and if <clears throat> one or more of the remaining boilers fail and can't be repaired <clears throat> cost effectively, um, a temporary system isn't something we purchase. That's something we rent. Right. So it's kind of an open-ended cost, depending on how long we need it. Right. So it w- we'll probably get a per month cost and then estimate how far out we need that and budget for that. It could so be we, six sorry, months. Sorry. It, well, it yeah. could be six months. It could be two years. We, you know, it's it, it really comes down to how quickly the town moves on their end. So I think I think it would be really helpful. I know you're already working on it, George, but I think it would be really helpful to be able to go back to this working group and say, okay, we've gotten, you know, a cost for temporarily renting a service, you know, renting a boiler if we need it, and so you know, I just want to make sure they're factoring into their cost model, this number. And I think the sooner they have that number, the better so that, again, everybody's working with as much information as possible when they're deciding the timelines that they want to use. So if we could make that a priority and get that over to them, that would be, and I, again, I know you're working on it, George, but um, far. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to George when you were saying um, if that doesn't go through and then we would have to get efficient, modern equipment. Now, how would that work with an old building? I'm just thinking of things like, you know, I'm a Mac person. So every like few years I have to get a new MacBook, which is horrible, right? Because nothing, nothing works. So when you get a new phone and none of the chargers in the house work, is it like that? Like, is it? Well, just, yeah, yeah, kind of because compatible? any new any new boilers that we get are not going to be able to be operated by the pneumatic thermostat control system that we have. So the control system would absolutely have to be replaced okay. uh, along with the boilers themselves. Um, now, say, for instance, if they determined that some of the pumps throughout the building would remain and be rebuilt, uh, the controls could possibly be modified to work with them. 
you know, you have dampers and other things. Uh, for instance, when we upgraded special collections to computer controlled rather than having the pneumatic system, um, they were they were able to modify and adapt to much of the existing system. It was certainly not cheap by any of the stretch of the imagination, but in some cases they're able to do that. But the entire control system would have to be replaced, definitely, mm -hmm. along with the boilers. Okay. Unfathomable. So we'd just go back. We'd just be spending money and wouldn't have an ADA compliant building, wouldn't have a net zero building, we, uh, just a whole bunch of new equipment and money, just like with the schools, basically. Yes. That's that's the situation. Okay. Thank you. So I guess I want to clarify my understanding about what we were, and maybe this is better done at the, the board meeting, but I guess just checking in with you guys in terms of you know, what this group was tasked with in terms of backup building project planning. So I'm, because we're buildings and facilities, I'm not viewing us as looking at, you know, the space needs and things like that, because obviously we're like, we're not getting into really anything beyond trying to keep the building open if the project doesn't move forward. Is that everybody's understanding of what our task is? Okay, so, um, okay. Okay, um, oh, so I think that's everything. I note that we now have four attendees, and so I'm just gonna open up again. Um, if anyone in the audience who's joined us, thank you, by the way. Uh, one more opportunity for public comment. Um, happy to open the, the floor up. Just raise your virtual hand. Okay, still seeing none. <laughs> um, think unless anybody else has anything else at oh, this point there's a hand oh, uh, there's from a hand. Good. yeah great um thank you um owen i don't know how to say your last name so i'm not going to try you should be unmuted if you want to go ahead and you hear me yeah can you yeah. say your say your name and where you live and then yeah. we're happy to get your comment Awesome. Um, I'm my name's Owen. I'm a I'm an Amherst College student, and okay. I'm I'm writing a little uh, essay about like public meetings and stuff. So okay. I, so yeah, so I'm just here, kind of just like taking notes and stuff, and I'm kind of just curious, like with this with this meeting generally, like, I've been taking notes the entire time. What do you think, like when you guys set this meeting, like right now, what was the purpose of this meeting to get done? Um, so we have a um, we are the buildings and facilities subcommittee of the Jones Library, and so our charge is basically we we meet monthly um, and uh, things related to the functioning of the physical building. Um, and so at this point in time, it's really more of uh, updates on where things. So George is our head of buildings and facilities. Sharon's our library director, and so George meets with this group or is part of this group um, and just gives us updates on the building, the grounds, things we need to be thinking of, uh, and whatever we need to be relaying to the board to think about generally to make sure that the building stays operational, functional, and safe for the public. Awesome, that's perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Of course. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, Sharon, I saw that you have a change for the next meeting. I assume that's because of the spring break. Yeah, and and so I was just throwing out there Tuesday, April twenty fifth at nine a.m. If you could, but uh, it doesn't certainly doesn't have to be that. It works for me, but far and George, let me know. That's good for you, George. Good. Um, you said the 25th? Yeah. Yeah, that works for me. And then, Sharon, you got my message about the May meeting, right? Yeah, the May... I think it was May 16th. May 16th. So do you want to switch that to May 23rd? If that works. 
That's fine for me. Is that okay for you, George? Uh, yes. Thank you. Beautiful. My calendar won't let me move it for some reason. Oh, there it goes. All right, May 23rd. Great. All right. Only this event. So May 23rd. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any topics not anticipated by me. No, so, can I just say how happy I am? I love it when uh, students of any age get involved in local politics, uh, local, yeah, uh, because I don't want to call it politics, local government affairs, because, uh, you know, nothing is more immediate than, than, than attending, you know, town government meetings. So it's thank true. you for being here. And oh, and the meetings are recorded, so you can go back and listen to our content <laughs> if you didn't catch something. So, all right. Thank you to all the attendees who joined us today. Thank you to the committee. Thank you, Sharon. And thank you, George, for, um, yeah, I don't envy your job. I don't envy any, 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 any of your jobs, but thank you. Really, I appreciate everything that you do to keep this building running in what are really difficult and complex um, ongoing situations. So thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thanks, right. George. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, Bye, Alex. Guys. We're Bye. during the meeting at 9.31. Thanks, everyone.